Hey there, hope you're doing well, and I'm excited to show you the Z-Man Bang Stick today. And what we're going to be doing is showing you how to Nico rig. And this is a technique that I've been very, uh, becoming familiar with this year. I've caught a lot of fish on it. It's been a big player. So just the other day, I was down at the James River. I caught a 590 on this uh, exact setup right here. It put a big one in the boat, kicked me off, pushed me into the top, uh, keeping the lead actually, and then put it finished with the 11th place finish. So I want to go over this whole setup. I'm going to show you quick what this Nico rig is and what the importance is. So basically it is a soft plastic stick worm. What I like about the Z-Man is it's got these little tentacles here, the bang stick. So it's going to fall to the bottom because you put a little Nico shrooms in there. It's this little nail weight right there. It pushes right in. So I'm going to go over all this in super detail, um, go do it real slow. And what it basically happens is when that bait's going out, it's gonna sit on the bottom because you have that weight. It's gonna to fall to the bottom. This is Elastec, super stretchy, not gonna rip it up. So when it falls, it lands there and it's gonna sit on the bottom and you're gonna shake it and it'll stand. Those little appendages will be right in those fish's face. It really gets their attention. And all you're doing is taking this and hooking it right in the middle of it and we're gonna be going from there. But first things first, let's get started with the bang stick itself, how we're gonna rig it. I'm gonna get a brand new one. We're gonna go through it step by step. So what I'm using is a Hayabusa FPP straight 2-0 hook. This is just a little flipping hook. You can see right here is the exact setup. This monofilament guard right here, that's gonna just catch um, a little bit of grass or algae or weeds or whatever. So we're taking that FPP straight. We're gonna do a couple modifications to it to get started. First thing I'm gonna do is take uh, a pair of scissors. We're gonna cut off that monofilament guard. Um, you're just going to work it through there. It'll cut right off. It comes off pretty easy. Um, it's great for when you're flipping, but not so much when you're throwing a wacky rig or a Nico rig. So we got it off there, but you can see there's two little barbs at the top of the hook shank. So I'm actually going to take a pair of pliers and we're going to crimp them down. Same thing. We don't want to catch those um, little pieces of algae or anything on there. We want to get this as natural as we can. So it's important to crimp those two down, but do not crimp your barb on your hook itself. Um, we want that obviously for catching those fish. So now that we got the hook ready, we're gonna get our bang stick ready. We're gonna take see, we got a brand new one right here. This is the um, sprayed grass color. The other one I was using down in the James River was California crawl. And you're gonna throw this out there um, and you're gonna get a lot of bites with it. It really, it's a good finesse fishing technique. You can see this is the Nico shrooms that come with um, for specifically Elastec. It sticks in there really well. It's got that little um, metal barb and it's got two barbs on it that hold that bait on. So we're gonna take these. Um, this is the sixth ounce. This is a big one. They also come in a 10th, a 15th, and a 20th. Um, usually I'm fishing it pretty slow. It depends on depth, but when I was fishing down at the James River specifically, I was fishing in uh two to five foot for the most part so i was using a what's 120th i wanted that real natural fall um if you have current it's good because then it'll slide around down there and this looks super natural so we're gonna take the end without the appendages the fatter end here you're gonna take your nico shrooms head and you're gonna push it right down in there and it's important is you want to push that and you see as you're pushing it it'll stop but you got to make sure you get that flush so you're gonna grab just below where that barb, you can feel it in there, the metal, push it, and you know, all of a sudden you'll feel it click again. Do that, and then you can see you have that head. Sometimes I'll pull it a little bit, try to straighten it up a little bit, and you got your weight in there now. So when that falls, like we were talking about, it's gonna fall straight like this, shake it. It's gonna look super lifelike down there on the bottom. Um, sometimes you gotta just check your little appendages there. They sometimes stick together after being in the pack for a while, but you got your bang stick ready to be Nico rigged. So now we're gonna take, we'll use the one on the rod here, um, your Hayabusa hook, that FPP straight 2-0 that we modified, got all cleaned up and ready to go. And this is very, very important. We're gonna take our hook, we're gonna go where that little like egg sac is, it's basically the non-ribbed part of the uh, worm here. And we're gonna go right through there, but on an upward angle. So. That's super important because if you kind of come down and you were going this other direction and you hooked it like this, it's gonna not get that hook to drive right up in the roof of their mouth. You need to make sure when you're setting that hook, it goes straight up. That's gonna bury it in there like so. 
So I like to have it on that little bit of an angle up to the top, just like that. Super, super important. I can't stress that enough though. <laughs> um, it'll get you more bites. You'll get more, um, not even more bites, but you'll get more fish hooked up and landed because of it. So now that we got this ready, um, we're gonna go over how I'm gonna cast it out here, where I'm gonna be fishing it. And I also wanna go over the rod and reel setup, which is very important. So that's gonna be our next step. This rod and reel, let me take a step back from you, is a favorite setup. This is the favorite hex. Um, this is a 721 medium heavy spinning rod, which is a seven foot, two inch rod. Um, it's super light. It's their high end uh, model they have. It retails for 400. If you wanna try it, um, you can use my code GB20 on their website. It'll save you 20% off the rod, so it'll save you 80 bucks. Um, really worth it. It's you feel everything with it. I I use this rod for a little bit of everything. Nico Ray, Wacky Ray, I'll throw swim baits on it. Um, if I had one rod to use, this would be it. But getting back to the Nico Ray, why it's good. Um, you can feel everything like we were talking about. The reel is a 2500. It's a favorite as well. It's a rush. Uh, it's a great reel. Um, it picks up a lot of line really quick, which is important when you're fishing around um, areas that have sort of structure or cover. So like out at the lake I'm at today, I'm gonna to be throwing it around a lot of stumps. So when I hook those fish, I wanna hook them and pull them away from it really fast. Um, the line on this is Seaguar uh, Smackdown Braid. It's flash green. I use 15 pound almost all the time. Um, occasionally I'll drop down to 10, sometimes I'll go up to 20, but 15 is my go-to with this um, setup here. And then I'll tie on a Seaguar Gold Label leader. And this will depend a little bit around the structure you're on. I won't go below 10 hardly ever. Um, the water would have to be so clear, not really fishing around a whole lot. Um, so eight's usually off the table, but 10 pound Gold Label, and I'll go all the way up to 15 if I'm fishing around some real gnarly stuff that I need to make sure I have a little more backbone that I can lean into those fish a little bit more and pull them away. But that 10's, just, it's super invisible. That gold label is really good stuff. Um, it's got a thinner diameter, but the same strength as a smaller sized uh, line. So really good um, combo with all of that set up. Um, make sure you check it out. The next step is we're gonna show you how to throw this out there and fish it. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna stay here in the middle of the boat. It's a little bit windy. I hope the audio is doing well, but you're gonna cast this out and you're just gonna make a real long cast. It'll be firing around. It might be around structure, it might be not. And you're gonna cast it out there, and you can see here we got a. Uh, let me change my angle here. I'm gonna cast to the deeper water where it's not gonna be actually casting like where the fish are gonna be as much as this guy, the angle we got going right now. But you're gonna take your Nico, cast it out there, let it fall. And I want that to fall on a uh, pretty much slack line maybe a little bit of a semi slack line just in case you want to see um, the fish grab it as it's going down and then I'm gonna kind of just reel up some of that slack catch it so when it hits the bottom I know it hits the bottom and when it does hit the bottom that's important because I would say probably 90% of your bites are gonna come on that initial cast they're gonna hear it hit the water it's gonna fall this fish are gonna come check it out and when it hits the bottom they're gonna come over and just suck it right off or they're gonna grab it before it hits the bottom so once it hits the bottom I'm gonna pick up I'm gonna drag it a little bit, give it a couple little shakes, just enough to move that bait probably one to three foot. Um, not a whole lot, depends on the structure you're around. If you've got a piece of like a stump you're hitting, move it less. You wanna keep it right on that piece of exact structure exactly. Um, and then you're just gonna keep working it back there. And I'll do that usually two, three times. I'm not gonna work it super, super far on most cases. Um, the James River, I was casting it across this um, little point that had current coming around as the tide went out. So if you saw that, um, it was just a little sweet spot that I would work it right through there, drift it through there, almost like you're a fly fishing. It's real natural getting your bait to come through there and you can get those bites because of it. Um, here, I'm gonna be targeting more so stumps. There's some like rocks and grids. I'm gonna cast it out there, let it hit the bottom just like so. It's only about three, four feet there. So that thing's gonna fall down to the bottom in probably two seconds, three seconds. It's gonna sink about a foot or two per second. It's gonna be quick. So we gotta hit down to the bottom. We're gonna pick it up, give it a couple little shakes. And when you give it those little shakes, it's gonna make that um, worm just kind of pulse real quick. That bang stick's gonna just kind of fold up, but it's also gonna stand up because it's made of elastic, which is super important. Um, and what makes this Nico rig here, this setup, 
I believe the best out of any worms that you can use for it because it's going to stand right in their face. It's going to be um, super defensive and those fish are going to really want to get after it and see what's going on and why there's baits down there and it's uh, making a lot of racket and showing up there. But we're going to work that a little bit then I'll let it sink back to the bottom. I'll do that two or three times like we were talking about and then I'm going to reel up and make my next cast. Um, something important here too, we are talking about a little bit, is that Elastec is nice because now you can see we got our hook there and it's super stretchy you can hook it right through the middle of this thing and it's not going to rip off you're going to cast this uh, for a long time it, you might not get all day out of it but i only go through two or three worms usually a day it's not a whole lot so it's cost effective it works really well for it and um, i love that you don't have to add an o-ring or worry about casting your worm off every couple casts because of it so if you have any questions about this Nico rig setup, um, how to fish it, kind of where to fish it, um, make sure you put them in the comments below. I'll go back. Um, I'll try to make sure I answer everybody's. And if I need to do another video on this to go in more detail, I can absolutely do that. But I think this is going to be a great start for you. Um, if you have any um, friends that are looking to learn a little more about fishing, make sure you share my page with them. It helps me. It 